Good day to you scallywags and tinker nerds. I know ye be asking yourself, why ye be talking like a scurvy pirate? Today I be conjuring up what be known as a pirate box. All right, that's getting annoying fast. A pirate box is a wireless device that isn't connected to the network, but you can connect to it wirelessly. And it's intended for people to share files on it anonymously. I'm not gonna be making exactly that, but I'm gonna be making my take on it, which is a portable media server where you can connect to it wirelessly and stream your media. Some of you may know that we just survived our hurricane here in Tinkerland. And that's actually what inspired this project. We had to prepare for potentially several days without power. So we started prepping. Flashlights, check. Batteries, check. Food, check. Water, check. With all the essentials out of the way, I started brainstorming ways to still have internet when we didn't have access to the internet. Obviously, I can't download the whole internet and keep it offline, but something that I can do is create maybe a little battery battery-powered Wi-Fi hotspot that stores things like music, photo, videos, and other things of entertainment. So the idea is to take a Raspberry Pi and use it as a portable hotspot that also acts as a media server. I started with a Raspberry Pi 3B+, Plus, but you can make this work with just about any Raspberry Pi as long as it has wireless. I downloaded and burned the Raspbian OS onto a micro SD card. And while I was on the computer, I loaded all the media files that I wanted onto a USB thumb drive. But you can also use a portable hard drive if you need more space. Plugging the SD card peripherals and a physical network cable into the Raspberry Pi, I stepped through the initial setup to set my location and update the Pi. The one thing I didn't do was connect it to wireless because we're gonna be messing with that in just a second. Okay, the first thing to do is to set this up as a wireless hotspot. So let's verify that we have at least one wireless device installed by running this command. ETH0 is the physical ethernet connection and anything that begins with WLAN is a wireless device. Mine has one called WLAN0, which is the one that's built into the Raspberry Pi. If you have a USB Wi-Fi adapter or multiple Wi-Fi adapters plugged in, you may see a WLAN1 or something like that. Now that I know I have a Wi-Fi device to use, I need to assign it an IP address to use for our new hotspot. So let's edit the dhcpcd.conf file to give it a static IP address. Make sure that the IP address that you give it is completely different from the IP address on your current network. Save that and let's restart the DHCPCD server. Then we can install DNS mask to add DNS capabilities for our hotspot. Back up the current DNS mask configuration file and, and let's create a new one. In it, you just wanna tell it what interface to use and what range of IP addresses to assign. Now, remember that the IP address range should match the IP address that we set earlier for our wireless device. Next, let's install Host APD, which is the hotspot software, and let's create a configuration file for it. Now, there's a lot of stuff to put in here, including what wireless interface to use, the driver name for the wireless device, and this one is the default driver for the Raspberry Pi, what SSID to call it, and you can call it whatever you want, the wireless broadcast information, security information, and the passphrase, which again, can be whatever you want. Save it and then let's edit the default host APD file and uncomment this daemon line so that it points to the configuration file that we just created. Then start both of those services up and reboot the Pi. When the Pi comes back up, you should be able to take your mobile device and view available networks to see if your Pi's hotspot name that we created shows up. At this point, you can connect to it, but other than that, there's not really much else you can do. So the next step is to set the Pi up as a media server so that after we connect to it, we can access all of our media. Back on the Pi, let's plug in our storage device with the media on it, and let's install the mini DLNA media server. We need to find the unique ID for this storage device, so run this command and then find the line that ends in SDA. Any SDA device is generally a storage device. And since I only have one storage device plugged in, this one is mine. And its unique ID is this. So to mount it, create a new folder for it and then use this command to mount it to that folder for this session. Now, if we browse to that folder, it should contain all the contents from our storage device. If you wanna permanently mount it, edit this fstab file and then add this line to it.
Now it'll auto map the folder every time the device reboots. Finally, we can edit the mini DLNA configuration file to point to the media folders where our files are stored. You can even specify which folders are for audio, video, and pictures. Then just restart the mini DLNA service. Now on your mobile device, make sure you're connected to your new Pi hotspot and then use any program that supports DLNA to browse your media. I'm using VLC because it's available for Android and iOS and it's free. The next step is to make it portable and so I just powered it up with this rechargeable power bank and stuck it in a nice and conspicuous container. This is good for power outages but it's also good for travel. You could take it on camping trips or even put one in your car so that you can stream music on the road. You could even try to take it on a plane if you can get it through security. Now that you have your own portable hotspot you can add a lot more stuff to it if you want including things like web pages and make it into its own intranet. What would you add to your portable hotspot? Spot. Let me know in the comments below. If you have any ideas, you can submit or vote for your favorites at tinkernut.com slash ideas. You can click here to watch more videos like this. And if you got any value out of my show and would like to give some value back, please feel free to donate at patreon.com slash tinkernut. All right, that's it for this tutorial. For more, go to youtube.com slash tinkernut.